Hey everyone, welcome back. You know, sometimes you stumble on a topic and it's like, whoa, why aren't we talking about this more? That's how I feel about agoraphobia and autism. Totally agree. It's flying under the radar for sure. So we got to deep dive into this, but first things first, right? Agoraphobia, dot, it's that anxiety, right? Where like being trapped is the big fear, crowds, buses, that kind of thing. And sometimes... Even just leaving the house alone, that can be a hurdle, too. It really varies. It's a spectrum, yeah. And then autism. I mean, everyone's heard of it, but explaining it simply is tough. It's how your brain works, how you experience the world. Communication, social cues, sensory stuff. It's all different. Not wrong, just different. And what blows my mind is these two things. They seem totally separate, but UT, they might be linked. And that's where this cheap ABA article comes in. Yeah, and right off the bat, it says this co-occurrence, agoraphobia, and autism, it's more common than people think. Way more, it sounds like. So then, are people getting misdiagnosed, do you think? Because if you don't know, to look for the connection. Huge possibility. And that's what got me. It's like, hold on, how many people are dealing with this and no one's putting the pieces together? So true. But like, where do you even start to see the overlap? Because they present so differently. The article mentioned shared struggles, like social situations or how your senses get overloaded. Those could go either way, right? Oh, definitely. Imagine you're highly sensitive to noise, right, right. like a lot of autistic folks are. So a loud, crowded mall, that's torture. You could avoid that. Makes total sense. But then someone with agoraphobia, they might hate the mall too. But for them, it's more about feeling trapped, like what if something happens and they can't get out? Two different roads, same destination avoidance. Exactly. And if you just see the avoidance, you miss the whole picture. And that's where misdiagnosis happens, I bet. Totally. And that's what this article is all about. Oh, yeah. Going deeper, not just the surface stuff. And that's where this whole anxiety thing gets interesting, right? Hmm? Because the article says, like, even if both agoraphobia and autism make you avoid stuff, the anxiety itself, it's different. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Two people, same behavior, totally different reasons. Like, picture this. Classic agoraphobia, the article says, think fight or flight, right? It's about escaping. Escape from what? Whatever they perceive as the threat. Could be totally irrational, but think panic attack in a traffic jam. They feel trapped. Uh, okay, I'm with you. But how's that different from autism, then? So with autism, the article suggests it's less about that immediate get-me-out-of-here feeling and more about, like, sensory overload sensory overload yeah or like you said earlier social stuff being hard right or even just surprise routines messed up that throws them yeah. big stress so it's not escape it's more like too much input gosh, shut exactly down. subtle difference but huge e for diagnosis the article says like imagine a therapist their client freaks out on a crowded bus oh yeah classic example if that same person they're fine in a busy store like no problem because they can move around it's not closed in bingo <laughs> Probably leaning towards agoraphobia there. But the article goes on. If it's ANY, social situation, store, bus, whatever, same anxiety. Autism is more likely. Could be, yeah. Shows you got to look deeper, right? Not just the behavior itself. Totally. The why behind it. And this is where it gets even trickier. Because, get this, autistic people might be more likely to develop agoraphobia too. Wait. Seriously, why though? Think about it. Someone with autism, they're already dealing with a world that doesn't get them right. That's got to be stressful, just baseline. Exactly. So add that to the things that trigger agoraphobia. Recipe for disaster, almost. Kind of, yeah. And suddenly, that co-occurrence, it's not so surprising anymore. Okay, wow. So treatment-wise, if you've got both, where do you even begin? Yeah, that's a good question. Because it's not like, oh, here's the agoraphobia pill, you're cured. It's all connected. Nope. Definitely not that simple. Yeah. The article really stresses you need a plan that hits both things. The anxiety and the autism. Got to treat them together. So, like, different therapies at the same time? Is that what you're thinking? Could be. The article mentions CBT, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. Helps you change how you're thinking about stuff. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. So, with CBT, you learn to challenge those thoughts, right? The what if spirals that get us all. What if I have a panic attack on the subway and can't escape? That kind of thing. Exactly. And then maybe alongside that exposure therapy, mm -hmm. especially for agoraphobia. Baby steps, right? Like yeah. if crowds are scary, you start small and build up. Kind of. But they could even do it with VR now, the article said. Like, yeah. super realistic. Whoa, seriously. Technology is wild. But that probably has to be tailored, right? Right. VR for agoraphobia is different than like sensory overload stuff. Absolutely. It's got to meet the person where they're at. And of course, the article goes on about support, like long term, 
for those autism challenges, sensory, social, the whole nine yards. Sounds like a lot to juggle. It is, yeah. But here's what really got me thinking. It's not just about the person, right? There's ripple effects. No, interesting. Like, it impacts their whole life, not just their own head. Exactly. The article talked about education, jobs, relationships, okay. all harder. Imagine you literally can't follow your dreams because the anxiety is so bad. That is rough. We don't even realize, like, going to a movie, holding down a job, some people, that's a huge victory. Right. So the article ends with this question, and I got to know what you think. It asks, if being autistic makes agoraphobia more likely, what's that say about early help? Oh, that's deep. I mean, I'm no expert, but it says to me early intervention is key why, right? If we make the world more autism friendly from the get go, schools, workplaces, all of it. Exactly. Then maybe, just maybe, some of that anxiety never even gets that bad. Makes you think, right? Mm. How much could we prevent if we just understood better from the beginning? This whole deep dive has been eye opening. I feel like I need to go read like 10 more articles now. There's a ton of good stuff out there. And hey, for everyone listening, same deal. If this got you curious, don't stop here. We'll link some resources in the show notes too, so check it out. There you go. Keep that curiosity going, everyone. And until next time, happy diving.